Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Connections and Directions, our University of Michigan Civil and Environmental Engineering podcast. My name is Michelle Santillian, and I am the CEE Marketing Communications Specialist and host of this series. During our podcasts, we are featuring members of our CEE community and how their work reflects our mission of engineers in service to society. We will be highlighting our strategic directions and our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. CEE's five strategic directions are human habitat experience, shaping resource flows, adaptation, automation, and smart infrastructure finance. I'm here today with Ethan Kennedy, CEE's instrumentation and control engineer. Welcome, Ethan, to our podcast. Thanks for having me. How long have you worked at the University of Michigan and specifically in CEE? So I started um, November of 2017, so it'll be six years this November. And what is your role in the department? So I'm an instrumentation and control engineer. So really that means assisting uh, faculty and graduate students kind of bridge the gap with um, programming and electronics to help them uh, achieve their research goals. And you recently graduated from the University of Michigan with your degree. Can you tell us a little bit about what you studied and how that supports your work? Yeah, so um, initially when I hired in um, to the department, my role didn't exist. Uh, Over the years, they started to realize, hey, computers are becoming more and more important and there's a lot of uh, lapses of knowledge in the department that we have. Um, So I initially hired in as an electronics technician. And um, back in 2017, I was, you know, just getting out of the military, starting to go to college on the GI Bill. And the opportunities that were presented to me of, you know, kind of the work that needed to be done kind of aligned with, you know, hey, I could step up and do more engineering things more than technician things so that's really you know comes down to instead of following a specification kind of defining what the specification is and kind of build a system around that because a lot of times they aren't really well defined so having this job while going to school for engineering really gave me a space to kind of exercise the things I was learning in class you mentioned your service in the military. Thank you for um, serving our country. Thank you. Um, is there anything that you uh, gained from your experience there that is relevant to your job in CEE or that you apply mm. um, in, your, in your occupation today? Uh, definitely. So um, a big part of what I did in the military, uh, so I was on submarines. I was a uh, reactor operator for... Um, Los Angeles class nuclear submarine. So that job was based around really maintaining and operating INC equipment, instrumentation and control equipment on board the submarine. So the biggest thing that carries over to the department now is um, troubleshooting. So someone comes to me and says, Hey, my equipment's not working. I have, you know, years of experience of fixing things and figuring out what the problem is to to fix it. So I'd say that's the biggest thing that I take here from the military. Okay. And how do you see yourself participating in CEE's strategic directions? Yeah. So uh, as a, so my degrees, uh, electrical engineering and computer science, uh, they really play into the um, automation uh, portions of our strategic vision. Um, I'm always excited to tackle a challenge of someone coming to me say hey we want to automate this thing is it possible and you know it's just a fun challenge to get creative with making that happen and how does our mission of engineers in service to society resonate with you yeah so uh, just bigger career career goals for me in general Um, I like that um, civil and, and, and water resource engineering in general is more focused on, you know, making a civil society, uh, being, um, using our resources wisely. It's not, you know, largely profit driven, like a lot of, um, career paths you could take in computer science and electrical engineering. 
So for me, that's kind of what I want to do with my time. I don't want to spend a lot of my time and effort trying to make a corporation rich. I want to do something that'll, um, you know, do good for the world and outlive me, so to speak. Sort of benefit the greater good, exactly. if you will. Yeah. And how do you see DEI incorporated in our department, not necessarily yeah. specific to a class? Yeah, so, um, you know, the, the, the university setting is, um, you know, great for fostering a environment where everyone feels comfortable to voice their, um, you know, their ideas. And that, and, you know, from an engineer's perspective, that's great to have a diverse set of brains thinking about a problem. If you have a room full of people from the same state, same country, you know, a lot of their points of view might be very similar. So having a diverse set of people in the room is just always great for solving a problem. And what do you enjoy most about your job? Yeah, so I would say... Um, feeling like I make a difference in people's lives. So like when I first started here, like one of the very first things I worked on, there was this, um, um, this, this box that was logging oxygen and, you know, there's a lot of, um, just issues they're trying to work out and they came to me for help. Like maybe I could steer them in the right direction. And for me, I was like, Oh, I can just, you know, throw this thing together for you and get it all set up for you. And they were, you know, they weren't kind of expecting that. And at the end of it, I gave him the box and like the, I, like I, to this day, I remember his face and everything, just the like sincere gratitude they had. Like I could tell this thank you was real. I could tell they greatly appreciated what I, you know, had made for them. And that, that's kind of what motivates me to come to work every day, so to speak. And is there anything that you would like to add? Um, I think the future is um, bright. A lot of, it's not a lot of uh, people's opinions right now, but um, I think working here has really um, made me more optimistic about the future, meeting some of the, uh, the faculty that are thinking about these problems that I've never considered to be a thing that we should be thinking about in regards to, you know, water resources and civil engineering. Um, and I just you know, like to say thank you to everyone in the department for coming to this job. It can feel fa thankless sometimes and just having the passion that you do and doing your research. Can you give me another example of a situation or something that you built that just really st stands out mm. in your mind as unique or extremely different maybe from something that you've done before? Yeah. Um, well, kind of a, I guess it's a small world story uh for me there was a a uh project with the uh US military uh, in regard to the effects of um um sailors on on board uh ships that are you know attacked by uh ordnance um so the grad student the the, the PhD student that was on the project was um, not a U.S. national. Uh, so uh, for those types of projects, uh, specifically going to the ship to install our equipment, um, they weren't, you know, allowed to do that for uh, security reasons. So um, for that, I got to go with uh, the professor to go install this on a, uh, a destroyer in uh, Pearl Harbor, which was just so happened to be where I was stationed a few years before that. And uh, I got to install this um, equipment on board the ship to be fired at by a submarine, which a few years before I was on the submarine that was doing that part of it. And then I kind of got to see the other side of it, so to speak. So that's kind of um, an interesting uh, coincidence that uh, I got a kick out of, you know, just how much... Um, I guess the uh, the research community is uh, is linked in that way, and that sounds like an exciting opportunity too to be yeah. able to travel and actually see what you've built right come into action, if you will. Yeah, it was. I learned a lot on that project too. It was. Um, I was still. 
I was probably about a year or two into my degree, so I didn't know as much as I do now, obviously. Uh, I learned, you know, just a lot of a lot of stuff, mainly with, um, you know, like power uh, consumption, things like that, just, uh, you know, just everyday stuff kind of now. But um, I got exposed to a lot of neat things on that trip. And putting it into real world action, right, too. Right, exactly, yeah. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Thank you for listening to our podcast conversation. For more information about CEE at Michigan, please visit our website at cee.umich.edu. You can also reach our YouTube channel and Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn pages from our website.